Yep. And, and everybody's excited. Yeah, this is Daybreak. I'm excited to see a game on this map. I haven't actually casted in any games on this map. And Cores, once again, for My Standard heck. Gaming in the top right corner. And yep, and Womp Beats down below in the uh, 7 o'clock position. Yep. Blue this, Zerg player. Yeah, I'd love to talk about the map, but I honestly, I don't know it. I've never seen it before. Well, I've, I've watched a couple of games here, and um, mainly there's these two Zelnaga Towers in the center. They control three attack paths through the center, and then um, it does give you uh, center control over these areas. These narrow ramps are actually really good for Terran in the late game. There are destructible rocks in the center, um, so you yep. can break through those to give you additional attack paths later on. And uh, Terrans like to planetary fortress this area, making it really difficult for any other race to actually move through those areas. Um, yeah. And then there's the natural expansion, which has a very wide expansive opening, so it's really hard to do a fast expand on this map uh, for like Protoss and Terran players, obviously. And then uh, headed down to the uh, center area, there are additional destructible rocks guarding an even larger ramp. And then as we head over to the third and fourth base, you have to spread out a little bit more um, because uh, as of that point, you'll have to have a much larger army to control all of these spaces. And of course, um, there are pl plenty of spaces for you to drop inside the gigantic main over here. We see your, sorry, hate to cut you off, but I'm yeah. seeing the 15 hatch from Womp Beats. So, I mean, this map is huge yeah. from what I've gathered. And also the attack paths seem to take a really long time so we should absolutely see macro openers yeah uh, I expect Womp or excuse me to for course to expand directly off of this but he's grabbed the gas which is kind of unusual maybe he's gonna uh, open up Reapers again just to scout the map yeah get some map control maybe go Actually, for some Hellions to get some map control yeah I, he yeah expands. Um, yeah so, you're right yeah and over here our Zerg player of course taking the base here because it's really you have to take these windy paths to get over there, to get over to your opponent's base. So it's going to be a, a pretty easy defense here for our Zerg player. Uh, even if Kors decides to do some pretty hard rushing, it's going to take a little bit of time. That gives our Zerg player a little bit extra time to be able to uh, uh, defend. Oh, I love this. He stole. Well, he sees the gas first off, so he yeah. knows that it's going to be some sort of tech play. And then he decides to steal his opponent's gas, so now he's basically cut off the opener for Banshees, and he's really kind of guaranteed the, ch the chance that he's going to be seeing Hellions. Yeah. So generally, uh, we're going to see some Hellions out on the field, um, and most Terran players will try to do some damage, but it's not absolutely necessary to do some damage. All you have to do is get control of the towers, um, kill off any Lings that try to come your way, be able to take your natural expansion and then begin teching. I believe that's what we're going to see, and it looks like the natural expansion is now on the way. It looks like the gas was taken care of. Um, I guess the it's still shot. Wow. it's still a pretty bizarre opening. Um, wow, it's actually a one-one-one. I was going to say he has way too much gas to be going for Hellion, and the fact that he's expanding off of it, it's still really bizarre. I guess he was wants to have the options that. Uh, He'll be able to do whatever he wants, and mixing Hellions into his army to begin with is never a bad idea against a Zerg player. Unless, of course, we see just straight roaches, but yeah. that's not likely. And just getting straight roaches is also bad against Terran. So yep. Yeah, Marine you're, Marauders, you're much to, to effect. Yeah, unless you're looking to get yourself killed, um, or if you're less than Diamond. <laughs> and over here, Womp Beats getting up his spine crawler will be able to defend against any sort of Hellions. And uh, looks like we have the tech lab coming up for cores, and he's got a medevac coming out as well. So we may be seeing some blue flame hellions. We have also got the command center finishing it up. This yeah, it, you know this opener. It's this is what I'm expecting. Just marine marauder coupled by medevacs, and uh, you know a fast expand. It's kind of bizarre the fact that he didn't want to just go for more of that economy, and uh, you know get a much quicker expansion, but. Maybe he feared some kind of bus. I, I honestly don't know. I think it's a poor opener choice for this map. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll see what he does with it. Like generally, we see Terran players trying to go get for that, get that second base up pretty quickly, and then go for a pretty quick third with a planetary fortress, and then um, push out off of three bases. Or if they see the Zerg player doing something uh, weak-ish, uh, push out when the, that happens. Um, but uh, looks like both players gonna be gearing up now, and we have the. 
Roach Warren on the way for Womp Beats. Core's gonna be falling a little bit behind on food, which is generally expected as of this point in the game. Uh, lair is on the way, so that's actually a pretty quick lair there. Um, the double gas getting taken, so we may be seeing some Mutalisk play. Yeah, you know, it's too bad that he can't get an Overlord in there, because if he scouted just how small uh, Core's army is right now, and the fact that he's just getting his expansion saturated, uh, I mean, I probably shouldn't even say saturated. He finally has workers mining. Yeah. Um, he should really be working on grabbing a quick third, and there's a especially with his minerals right now. Here doing a lot of damage in the main, preventing the mining for a good 30 seconds. The three queens finally getting in there and chasing the minivac out of there. Core's not losing a single unit in that exchange. And Womp Beats, uh, let's take a look to see if he lost any workers. He lost eight yeah, he workers did. in that exchange, so that's not a good thing for Womp Beats as of this point. He needs to get um, a little bit more units out. He only has like a handful of Zerglings. Yeah, um, but like I said, as a Zerg player, that's really all you want. You want to have the least amount of units as possible, and the fact that he just lost all those drones, it's obviously significant. But uh, he is grabbing his third, and it's relatively quick. Yeah. You know, it's before the nine-minute mark. So, if, well, uh, you know, when he steps into the macro game, he'll have a ton of mutas. Yeah. The one thing I had a problem with was just that if Kors had controlled that drop a little bit better, I think probably 20 drones would have died. Um, yeah, so, uh, I completely yeah. agree. I, I missed it on the camera, but I can tell the Hellion was the only thing in poor health, and he still had Marines. Yeah. And yeah. Hellion Marines is enough to do serious, serious damage to Zerglings yeah, and, and Thrones. And the Marines spent a lot of time just shooting at, like, the Lair and the Extractor. <laughs> um, so, like, if he controlled that a little bit better, he would have wiped out a bunch of those drones. But the third base is finishing up for Womp Beats. And uh, I generally on this map, I expect Kors to be taking a third base relatively soon. He's actually taken a huge food lead. Now getting out some of Thors as well as tanks, so he's gonna be pretty well ready for those mutos. Yeah, and he actually has a really nice timing here. Uh, the fact that the third just finished and isn't saturated just shows how few units that Womp Beats will have. So uh, the prime time for him to move out and do some kind of push on that third base is basically right yeah, now. Womp Beats needs to transfer some drones over to that third base immediately so he can get a little bit more economy to be able to produce those units. As Kors begins to push out here, I imagined him getting a, like one or two more Thors at the max and then pushing out pretty quickly. Looks like we got a little bit of lag there, but that's okay. Looks like nobody was ready to drop. <laughs> Missile turrets now coming up for Kors as well, so he's going to be plenty well ready for those mutas. Yeah, let's see how many mutas we have on the field right now. Actually, quite a lot. Uh, seven mutas out right now. Let me double check. Yep, seven mutas on the way. And uh, he's coupling it with Banelings, so hopefully he can do some economic damage here. But with that Thor in pretty yeah, decent position... As well as those missile uh, turrets, it's just a little bit hard yeah. um, to poke in here. Maybe he'll be able to keep the Terran player in his base, but even that I find it's going to be hard to do, especially with the turrets as well as the muta count hasn't actually gotten up to that high number yet. And uh, looks like our Terran player is going to be advancing across the field. He has a couple of Hellions leading the charge. And we'll see if our Zerg player notices he's actually produced a round of drones right now. That may not be the correct thing to do. We've got a couple of Banelings out on the field, but the Zerg army is just looking a little bit small. There's five Banelings, seven Mutos, and ten Zerglings. In comparison yep. to this, this is not looking good for Womp Beats right now. He needs to make a bunch wow, of units. throwing up turrets too, preparing for the push. Um, yeah, he's in a position right now, like I said, he has a great timing to do serious damage, and uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for him yeah. to do any kind of uh, counter to this. Yeah, beats. I think his best bet might be an actual counter attack and give up but third. But he doesn't have that many units. He's only now producing 34 Zerglings. That is not going to be enough to save this third base. Kors can clean this up and just waltz, walk right back home. And um, even at home, he should be macroing up quite hard. He's getting additional tanks and Hellions plus Thors. So it uh, looks like Thors is getting in a pretty good position here. The Zerglings have spawned, but it's just a little bit late to save that third base. Um, we'll see if he's able to do the wrap around. He's running around the backside. There are Sea Shanks over there as well. Um, he's getting shelled. There we go. Finally moving in for the attack. But still, he really needed roaches, as crazy as it sounds. But to deal with that mech, and look at this, the Muta's just getting blown away, not doing any damage. All the Zerglings just completely melted. They came in at the wrong angle and just hit only the Thor. 
and they kind of got stuck in that little corner. So Wombeats lost his third expansion without doing too much damage to the Terran, or basically doing no yeah, damage he's, to the Terran army. He's looking the counter now, but now his force is way too small to do yeah, any damage. Shanks. It, yeah, he'll get held off with simple defense yeah. right here. There's a... Uh, Banelings still moving in. I expect to see a GG. I mean... Yeah, there's not much that Wombeats can actually do. Kors is probably looking to uh, take his third base pretty soon. The Mutas are trying to pick off a couple of these supply depots and the Terran army is returning home because of this but um yeah that's kind of bizarre um he should have just continued on with this yeah, push like he could do so much but damage. good for Womps he, he knew that the counterattack was probably the best option yeah so it, it took him a little he's little still bit he's still behind significantly out, though but um he's he's gonna be trying to push the Terran army back retaking his third base right now being as persistent as possible gonna make sure that he gets that third base up wouldn't mind him taking a risk here right now and taking yet another base as he does have some money in the bank um he just needs a little bit more production and a little bit more mining going on. He does have a few Zerglings popping out right now. We also have the melee attacks level 2 on the way for those Zerglings. And the Terran is going to be taking the uh, base over here. I don't quite agree with that one. Yeah, he's taking his third. Yeah, he, should take his, uh... he should take the back, the rear one, um, so that he can get more gas and minerals. Um, not sure why he's actually aiming to take the center one. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that only has one Vespian yeah, gas. I don't know why he's taking oh, this but it's a rich, it's a it's a rich geyser. Oh, but still, I mean, he could get this back base with a lot more minerals, um, with the two gas, and then take this base pretty relatively quickly as well. I'm not sure why he's opting to take this one first. Maybe it does give him a little bit of forward positioning. Wampeed's getting out additional mutas. His cloud is getting a little bit larger, um, but if Kors would just yep. start pushing forward. Um, I don't know what Wamp needs to actually do. Yeah, it's funny. Kors, Kors is, uh, his economy had climbed quite a bit, but now his production has really started to kick in. You can see that he's producing Thor's tanks and uh, everything else all at the same time while taking an expansion. And he's going to get a planetary, so he's really being safe right there. Yeah, it looks like the Mutas uh, are going to be running straight into the main, going to be taking out a turret over here. We'll see if they're able to do any economic damage. He's actually sacrificing a lot of mutas here and the mass repair on that turret is going to prevent those mutas from actually killing everything well actually no they killed everything off anyways wow he, he's killing a ton of harvesters the thor oh, is no, out the zerglings though. ran straight into the natural expansion the sl supply depots were lowered looks like one sea shank is going to be able to deter those and the uh, mutas continue to do tons of damage looks like we have a counter attack from yep. our terran player right now absolutely Yep, Kors, he feels pressured. He knows he needs to attack. He's losing way too much economy right now. Actually, 42 workers have been killed and yeah, climbing. He's not controlling so, the stuff in his main very well. Um, he responded a little bit too late to those mutas, and looks like they will be able to hollow out the Terran main. But this counterattack from Kors is just extremely powerful. Yeah, if, uh, if One Piece can find a way to handle that army, you know, he has a real shot at winning the game, but. There's just so many forces. Oh, look at the Banelings moving in. Oh, no. Annihilated with one volley. Yeah, all of those units are just really resilient against Banelings. The Thor's tanking so much damage. There's a Thor here with the 30 HP. And all of the uh, Terran units are going to be advancing over here into the natural expansion. There's not that many units out for cores before uh, Womp Beats right now. He's got 10 units and two Banelings. And against... I guess four sea shanks and five thors. That's not a force that you want to be using. No, unfortunately not. Uh, with that amount of thors, yeah, he'll, he'll need at least 20 mutas. Yeah. Um, it's still there's so much pressure on him right now. A queen moving into the battle, but this Terran push and looks way too deadly. Up and running straight into a thor, that's not a good thing. GG from Wamp Beats, and it's gonna be a game three. It's currently 2-0 uh, in favor of Standard Gaming. And we'll see what map they decide to choose next.